Hey folks, welcome back. We are back at our CCNA initiative. We left off at chapter seven, right? And we were talking about auto negotiation, right? And of course, chapter seven in volume one, let me make sure I make that clear, is going over configuring and verifying switch interfaces, okay? So we went over, you know, a lot of things, right? We went over how to, you know, configure an interface, how to shut it down, we went over, um, how auto negotiation works, right? We went over, you know, what duplex is, right? We went over what speed is and how to configure that on the interface, right? All these things have to do with configuration, right? But, you know, we do have to, you know, do troubleshooting, right? As CCNAs, CCMPs, and even the newer Cisco certification, the CCTs, you have to troubleshoot. You have to know what to look for, right? And so the one thing that will help, right, is interface status codes, right, and, and, and some of the reasons why you would see that code, right? And that's what my table, right, is showing right now, right, is, you know, you've guys seen multiple times on Lab Fun Days, you know, line status and protocol status, right? Right? And so line status generally, right, refers to layer one. Right. Protocol status generally refers to layer two. OK. And so let's take a look at this table and let's go ahead and just discuss line by line. Right. So if I do a show interfaces status. Right. And I see the line status says administer the loo down. Right. And the protocol down. Right. And the interface status is shown has disabled. What is that telling me? That's telling me that the shutdown command. Right. Is configured on the on that interface. That's it, right? Right. So you would go ahead and, and do a show run and just check to see, you know, hey, I verify it is shut down, right? Maybe it's for a reason, maybe it's X, Y, Z, but that's the root cause. That's it. Right. Remember, right? If you chose to get your CCNA, I like to tell people you've chosen the path of find, you know, figuring out puzzles, because <laughs> that's typically what it is. Right. Let's go to the next line, right? So Let's say we do the show interface status and we see a line status is down, protocol status is down, right? An interface status is not connect, right? It says not connect, right? So a typical root cause for that, right, is either no cable, bad cable, right? Wrong cable pinouts. Maybe you built, you, you made the cable your own and maybe you just, you know, the pinouts are messed up, right? Maybe it's a speed mismatch, right? Neighboring device, you know, is, is powered off, right? Um, Maybe it's shut down, right? Uh, the neighbor, the neighboring device is shut down, not yours, right? Um, or it's error disabled, right? We'll go over error disabled in the future, right? But all these things, right? They they literally relate to lab, uh, layer one and layer two, okay? So next line, right? So line status is up, but protocol is down, right? And the interface status is not connect, right? This is not expected on local area network switch physical interfaces. So you don't have to worry about that on a switch. Okay. Let's move forward. So we do a show interface status and we see down and we see down error disabled, right? And interface status is error disabled, right? The typical root cause is port security has disabled the interface. Right. And we'll talk about port security in the future. Right. But error disabled means that it has an error has occurred on the interface and it has been disabled by the software. OK. All right. Last but not least. Right. The you know, whenever we do the show interface status, what we always want to see is up, up. Right. Right. Interface status being connected. And this tells us layer one and layer two is functioning normally, right? And the interface is working, all right? Let's keep going, all right? So here's a, you know, here's a example of, you know, here's an example of show interface status command, right? And the thing is, right, um, in the book you'll read, and they go into detail of the difference between to code, right? Code meaning code, another word for words, right? Two words or one words, um, status codes, right? Oh. So here's what I mean by that, right? 
if I do a show interface status and under status, right, I see just one word. That's a one code interface status, right? But there are double codes, right? There are double codes, right? If we go ahead and if you guys take a look, give me one second, right? If we look at type, right? Type is an example, right? But, you know, two status codes, right, would be if you look at the type and we see 10 slash 100, right? So it's giving us it's giving us two options, right? Two words, right? 10 is one, 100 is, is another one, okay? That's it, that's it. No need to harp on it, but just, I just wanted to make that clear whenever you guys read it. Um, Cisco does like to use specific terminology that may throw people off, okay? All right, so of course, here goes a show interface status command, right? And this is regarding interface speed and, and duplex issues, right? So as we went through before earlier in this chapter, right, there can be issues setting, you know, setting the speed and duplex or it's not matching on both sides, right? So we take a look at it, right? We go ahead and we take a good screenshot, good, good screenshot that's showing us, um, that's showing us a few things, right? Showing us you know, full duplex, 100 megs, right? And it's highlighting, of course, the runs, the CRCs. And of course, I'll go over that in a little bit, right? But you're going to see it if we go to this last, so last slide, right? You're going to see, right, is that we're talking about fast, fast Ethernet 0 slash 13, right? It's showing as all of the good negotiation to work, right? It's set up well, right? But if you look at fast Ethernet 0 slash 12, we can see, of course, it was statically set, right? Because the the letter A is not before its designation of either full or half or whatever speed it is, right? Or the word auto isn't there, okay? Right? But let's lay the land a little bit, right? Let's talk about speed and duplex and what it actually is, right? Speed. Right. And this is in relation to, you know, the auto negotiation results, what have you. Right. Speed. Right. Since the speed without using auto negotiation. Right. But if that fails, use the IEEE default. Right. Slow, slow supported speed, which is often 10 megabits per second. Right. You guys remember that. Right. So by default, the switch is going to use auto negotiation. If that fails, uses IEEE. OK. Right, and of course, how the switch can sense the speed is using the electrical signals, right? And sensing the speed without um, auto negotiation is what I mean, okay? Duplex, of course, same, right? Use the IEEE defaults, right? If And here's what it means. If the speed is equal to 10 or 100, use half duplex. Otherwise, use full duplex. And this is just according to Cisco, right? Wanna make sure we make that very, very clear, okay? So. We take a look at this, right? So imagine switch twos, right? Gigabit zero slash two interface was configured with speed 100 and duplex full, okay? All right? Definitely don't recommend to do this on a gigabit interface, by the way. Um, all right, so we configured speed and duplex, right? Which disables IEEE auto negotiation, right? If switch one, right, gigabit um, zero slash one, right, tries to use auto negotiation, right, it would see the speed as 100, but what is it going to do based on our last rule? It's going to set it to half duplex. So on the other side, it was set to full, the other was set to half, right? What's going to happen is it's going to fail. Right? Switch one is going to follow that initial rule and go based off of the IEEE, but it's going to set it to half, right? And so when we do this show interface status command on switch one, and we see it, right? And we see we we see the a a dash prefix, right? We see it use auto negotiation on on its side, right? But it's not going to go ahead and identify what 
identify with the full on the other side. It's going to go based off of that I triple E, right? So then we're going to have a duplex mismatch. Right? But here's the tricky thing is that with this, right? If if the and and this is this is one thing I actually learned on the job as well as in the book, right? So if the speed, right, is set on a, to a to let's say it's set to 10 megabits on one switch and then 100 megabits on the other switch, right? Both switches, right, would be in a down, down, non-connect state, right? That's only regarding if I set the speed. However, right, if I go ahead and set the duplex, right, in that same scenario, right, one half or one full, if they don't match on a segment, right, on a, on a connection cable, whatever you want to call it, between two two uh, devices, right, two interfaces on, on different devices, it'll still show, it'll, it'll still show up, up, right, being connected or in a connected state, right? So this is where doing commands like show interface status and going to verify a few things, you need to go ahead and see what's happening, right? And this is where you would go ahead and do a show interface status and just look at that interface to see are there any output errors? Are there any collisions, right? Right? Are there this, that, and the third, right? So this is where your verification commands come in to assist you with troubleshooting, right? So with that being said, it was a good segue to go ahead and talk about the common layer one problems on working interfaces, right? So interfaces can be in an up, up state, right? And still not be functioning properly, okay? So... Of course, you know, it still can be functioning, right? But of course, errors are going to happen. Maybe runs will happen. Maybe giants, right? Maybe input errors, right? Maybe CRC errors are going to happen, right? Maybe output errors, collisions, et cetera. All these things can happen, okay? Some of the so, um, most common, right? The the Not most common, but what we've read about, read, read about in Chapter 2, the FCS field, right? In the Ethernet trailer. Right. That could be an error. You're right. And it can show up, you know, it can show up here in the show interface um, command indicating the interface. Right. There's something going on. Right. All these things, even though the interface, right, is up and it's working, layer one, layer two is fine, it can still have an issue. Right. But let's talk about, right. Let's talk about it. And I want you guys to take time out in your re and in your day and, and whenever you're in your studies to take the time out to actually understand what the actual, you know, what the actual different sections mean within that command, right? Learn about what runs are. And I won't read each and every one for you guys. Learn about what, what runs are, what giants are, what input errors are, right? What CRC is, right? What frame is, what packet output is, what output errors are, what collisions are, what late collisions are, right? Because you're going to have to, you know, understand what to look for in a show interface command, right? And some of these verification commands that we went over in this, you know, in this chapter to troubleshoot, right? To explain why something is happening, right? So I challenge you to do that. I challenge you to, of course, since we have come at the end of the chapter, to continue to go ahead and um, review the key topics in chapter seven, review the key terms, answer the do I already know this already questions at the beginning of the chapter, right? Review the command tables at the end of the chapter, review the memory tables. And if you have the actual book that comes with the, the SimLight lab, please do the lab, okay? All right, and of course, if you're having trouble with the labs, you could of course reach out to me or look at the, um, look at the Lab Fun Day videos, okay? So this closes out chapter seven, and we will continue in chapter eight. You guys have a great day.